Welcome back to mentalhealth.now. This is the second part of the four lobes that we discussed last week. So in this video, we are going to discuss occipital and temporal lobes. Now before we get started, I want to remind you that if you see terms that you have not heard before, make a note of those terms and ensure that you know at least what they mean. So their meaning is very important. And after that comes the association of those words with their respective lobes. So let's get started with the first temporal lobe. Now to have an overview of what factors, what features, what functions the occipital lobe is involved in. So it is primarily, majorly involved in vision, visuospatial processing as a part of it, discrimination of movement, color discrimination, and it is also implicated in learning and motor control. Now, when we talk about occipital lobe, David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel, they have made significant contributions on our understanding of the physiology of visual perception. So two names to be associated with occipital lobe are David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel. Moving forward, there are two important areas of occipital lobe that we need to know about. So it's the primary visual cortex and the visual association cortex. Now the primary visual cortex is sometimes called the striate cortex. Now why it is called the striate cortex, I'll tell you. When we view primary visual cortex under the microscope, it appears to have a stripped appearance. That is why it's called a striate cortex. It processes visual information from the eyes and it is responsible for visual perception, which is registered in the projection area of the visual cortex. So, as we discussed in the last video about projection and association areas, the primary visual cortex is a projection area. So it deals with the input of visual information. In connection with this, we also have the visual association area. Now the visual association area, it helps us identify and make sense of the visual information from the eyes. So visual perception is to do with the primary visual cortex, but making sense of that perception, recognizing that information, that work is associated with the visual association cortex. Now, what happens if either of them gets damaged? Damage to the primary visual cortex leads to loss of vision, visual hallucinations, and even visual illusions. Visual association cortex, if it gets damaged, then the person can develop agnosia. That is an impairment in visual recognition. Agnosia basically means that you can see the object, but you would not be able to recognize what that object is. Now, finally, we come to the T of the F pot that we discussed last week. So the temporal lobe, they are just found behind the temple of the head on both sides. Okay. So to get an overview of the functions that temporal lobe is involved in, hearing ability, memory acquisition, some visual perception, categorization of objects, and most important, do not forget this, language. Now, when we talk about the regions that we need to know as a part of temporal lobe, I will tell you about five important ones. So the first one is the auditory cortex. Then we have the auditory association area. We have the vernix area, the olfactory cortex and the hippocampus. So we'll go through them one by one. So the auditory cortex and it's very safe to say that your temporal lobes are associated with several important functions and you need to know, at least have an idea about all of them. So the auditory cortex is the first relay station for the auditory information in the cortex. It accurately decodes temporal variations of a stimulus and it allows more information to be obtained about the you know, complex sound, where it is coming from or whether it is in motion. What happens if it is damaged? Damage to the auditory cortex can induce a condition that is called auditory agnosia. Now you will perceptually be unable to identify the meaning of the verbal and non-verbal sounds or in other words, word deafness. Now directly below the auditory cortex lies the auditory association area. Now what does it do? It transforms basic 
information, the basic sensory information such as noise or sound into recognizable auditory information like words or music. So you're not just hearing the sound, you know what the sounds mean. Damage to the auditory association area, it impairs the recognition of real sounds and processing of everyday concepts for which sound features are essential. So the third important area in the temporal lobe is the vernix area. It is located in the left uh, temporal lobe in most people. It is named after Carl Wernick as the name suggests. And yes, Carl Wernick is an associate, a contemporary associate of Paul Broca. Now he first studied problems that arose as a part of this area. So what happens if Wernick's area gets damaged? So he was the person to be associated with Wernick's area. He has done a lot of work in it. Now, it is associated with language reception and comprehension. If you remember, Broca's area in the frontal lobe was associated with language production. Now, the Wernick's area lies in the temporal lobe and it is associated with language reception and comprehension. So, it is this area that helps us to understand the spoken language. What happens if this area is damaged? Damage can produce Wernick's aphasia inability to understand or produce meaningful language. So you would be able to speak fluently, you may be able to pronounce the words correctly, but the words would be wrong. Why? Because the comprehension is the issue here. Coming to the next important region in the temporal lobe, the olfactory cortex. Now the olfactory cortex is a very important part of our, our olfactory system that is our sense of smell. So the entire process that works in that area, the area of smell, it is a very important part of it, the olfactory cortex. Now the olfactory cortex, it's, it lies in the temporal lobe as I have mentioned. It is also responsible for processing information for smell. Now it is also involved in odor perception including odor intensity and the quality, even odor memories. You know sometimes when you uh, smell a distinct odor and you remember something of the past, you know something that you had a memory about. So smells can trigger memories. So odor memory to do with olfactory cortex. Now what will happen if your olfactory cortex gets damaged? Obviously, you will have problems with your ability to smell things. Next is the hippocampus. Now, this is a part of the limbic system, but physically it is located in the temporal lobe. So for this video, I will not go into the details of hippocampus as this will be discussed as a separate video. So in brief, hippocampus lies in the temporal lobe and it is to do with learning and memory processes. Okay, now what happens if your hippocampus gets damaged? Anterogid amnesia. So that is the term that you have to learn to associate with hippocampus. If there is a lesion or damage to the hippocampus area, you will, it will result in anterogid amnesia. That is, you will not be able to form new memories. More specifically, new long-term memories. Apart from these, Damage or lesion to temporal lobe in the left or the right side of the uh, hemisphere can also lead to other problems. So left side lesions can lead to decreased recall of verbal and visual content including speech perception, disturbed recognition of words and impaired memory for verbal material. If the lesions are on the right side of the hemisphere, it leads to decreased recognition of tonal sequences and many musical abilities get disturbed loss of inhibition in talking, recall of non-verbal material like music or drawings. Now, recognition of visual content is also disturbed as a part of right side lesion. Severe damage to temporal lobes can also alter sexual behavior. Now, this list by no means is exhaustive. So, thank you so much for listening and I hope that it was informative as well as a learning experience for you. With this, we have covered the four lobes of the brain in a very comprehensive manner which can be used not only as a part of your college syllabus but can also be used 
for entrances. So keeping both of those in mind, we have made very comprehensive videos for you and I hope that it helped. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Hit the bell icon to get updates on every time we upload a new video. Stay connected and thank you so much for watching.